Okay, today we're going to discuss the mycobacteria. So, this topic will be discussing all about the mycobacterium tuberculosis, the causative agent of our tuberculosis. And we will be discussing also here the non-mycobacteria, non-tuberculosis mycobacteria, or mycobacteria other than tuberculosis. Okay, so your mycobacteria would have here the general characteristics, so it appears to be bacilli. Therefore, that one is uh, slender. It may also appear to be slightly curved or even straight rods. So, bacilli, so pa siyang ano, kaya. Okay, elongated. Okay, this one would have here the very characteristics na thick na uh, cell wall made up primarily of the lipid content. And you call that one as your cord wax factor D. Cord factor D. And, of course, here the, the long chain of your mycolic acid. And that properties of the cell wall of your mycobacteria would enable that one to have here an acid-fast staining property. So, when you're performing the acid-fast staining, so our primary stain, we are using your um, basic fusine, that's color red in color. And uh, we are also using acid alcohol as our decolorizer. So, that's 3% hydrochloric acid in 95% uh, ethanol. Okay, that's become an acid alcohol. And therefore, your mycobacteria being or having that very thick mycolic acid, it will resist uh, decolorization when you are decolorizing that one with the use of your acid alcohol. And therefore, it will not uh, allow the uh, decolorization of the primary stain. It will just allow... Uh, your primary stain to remain at the cell wall. Okay, and therefore, once you try to subject this one to the counter stain, which is the methylene blue, it will not going to take up. And therefore, it retains the color of the primary stain, which is your basic fusine, and therefore, this one will give a red na color characteristics in your acid fast bacilli staining reaction. Okay, this one also have here a slow growth characteristics, able to grow as... Uh, Okay, a longer duration time, 2 to 6 weeks. Usually at the uh, optimum temperature at 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, first we discuss the mycobacterium tuberculosis. So again, this is the causative agent of our tuberculosis. So approximately for the prevalence, almost more than 1 billion population has been infected worldwide. <coughs> there are approximately 8 to 10 million new cases every year. And for those that's been exposed, ang nag the development of sakit is only as high, it's actually high, 15 to 20 percent. I mean to say that all will eventually, been exposed here, will going to develop a disease. And that will be highly dependent on your immune system, how much inoculum has been taken up by your body, has been uh, able to enter your respiratory tract, and of course the strain that try to be exposed, allow you to be exposed. So, all those factors are consideration. That's why 15 to 20% lang ang nag-develop na ng sakit dito. Even if uh, uh, there are much has been exposed. So, like for example, kung ang tao ay mababang kanyang immune system, so expect na magkakasakit siya. Or sobrang virulent ng strain natin, so most likely also the patient will going to develop a disease once exposed to that. Okay, you get infected here by respiratory droplets, close contact, or even by sneezing, or even coughing, or, or of course here by even talking and singing, as long as we're able to be exposed to the respiratory droplets, which is infected na respiratory droplets. Okay, then we have here the disease pathology related to your mycobacteria or tuberculosis. So, we can divide that one as the primary or even reactivation. But primary means to say this is the first exposure or the first infection of the patient. So, you're taken up here again the bacteria by inhalation. It enters your respiratory tract. Once the bacteria is within your respiratory tract, okay, this will be taken up by our uh, alveolar macrophages. Okay, the macrophage found in your lungs. Okay, and then that will try to be taken up by that. Papasok sa alveolar macrophage. And within your alveolar macrophage, the bacteria try to multiply. Okay, and therefore, try to cause here some manifestation in your respiratory tract. 
Most likely, the signs symptoms related to your tuberculosis infection is more of the allergic reaction or your hypersensitivity reactions. What will be an example of the manifestation? So the patient would have the fever, cough, okay, night sweats, weight loss, anorexia, hemoptysis. Pag medyo severe ng at infection, hemoptysis. So this is spitting or the presence of the blood in the sputum of the patient. So that's already a severe manifestation of the infection. Okay, so what will be the, uh, the clinical pathology related to your mycobacterium tuberculosis infection? So depending on your antigenic load and hypersensitivity reaction, so pag mababa ang antigenic load, mean to say the amount of the inoculum, um, and then you have your high hypersensitivity reaction that would result here to your granuloma formation. Granuloma is primarily made up of the combination of your lymphocytes, macrophages, or your capillary epithelium. And after the granuloma formation, this one tries to heal spontaneously. It tries to develop here calcification, encapsulation, okay, fibrosis, and scarring. Nagkakaroon ng peklat. And this will be the manifestation of your exposure. So pag nag-X-ray ang patient, so may peklat na makita sa kanyang pulmonary tree, that will signify that the patient has been infected in the past. On the other hand, if the patient would have your high antigenic load, high hypersensitivity sensitivity reaction, that will result here to the formation of your tissue necrosis. Okay, because of the release of your the enzymes, of your different cells involved in that. And this will be, this fibrosis, tissue necrosis will be considered to be less organized and there will be no granuloma formation. In the absence of your granuloma formation, you're going to produce here cautious materials or cheese like na materials. And that's made up of the cellular and non-cellular amorphous materials. And within that one, kung saan siya nagpuproduce ang cautious materials natin, it contains the bacteria. And most likely, uh, in some cases, wherein the patients were not able to be fully treated, Pag hindi siya na fully treated ang patient natin, so parang feeling mo gumaling ng patient, but the bacteria or the bacilli still remains within your cautious materials. And since meron pa rin siyang bacteria, it will have the tendency to reactivate infection. Okay, so pag nagsabing nag-reactivate, so magkakos ulit siya ng panibagong infection. Pag nag-reactivate siya or kailan siya magkakaroon ng reactivation, of course, we're talking about pag nag-down regulate ang ating immune system ng host natin. So, pag bumaba ang kanyang immune system, so pwede siya ulit mag-start ng infection that become your reactivation process. Okay, then we have your another manifestation of your tuberculosis infection will be the extra pulmonary, or we call it one as your disseminated or your miliary tuberculosis. So, pag sinabing extra pulmonary infection, so the infection go beyond your pulmonary tree. It go beyond with your pulmonary or lungs. Eventually, that the bacterial infection can disseminate through your blood. So it try to pass through your bloodstream. You call this one your hematogenous spread, where it could go to other part of your body and try to cause here your disseminated infection. It go to your, it can go to your kidney or genitourinary tract. It go to your lymph nodes, your CNS, arthritis, or even your bones. It could, Pag nasa bone na natin siya, you call, that one, you call that one as your pot disease. Okay, then we have here the colony characteristics of your mycobacterium tuberculosis. This one appears to be, in a culture media, it appears to be a uh, race, large, uh, dry, and eventually that one will have your puff color. So able to grow here in your Lowenstein Jensen or the LJ or even in your middle brook for two to three weeks. But in the case of your uh, special na mga middle brook, your M7H10, middle brook 7H11, that one we're able to grow here for 5 to 10 days. Okay, next we go to another <coughs> species here belonging to your mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. We have your mycobacterium bovis and we have also here mycobacterium bovis uh, BCG or your basal calmetcrine. So the bovis, okay, this one could eventually be, um, you can get that one by ingesting the milk coming from your infected cattle. 
your bovis BCG, BCG is your vaccine, <coughs> that's your basal calmitgerin, and that one, you get infected by that one, <coughs> okay, by immunization here of the immunocompromised patient. So, usually this one is a vaccine, dapat, that would try to boost our immune response. Since some patient natin is immunocompromised, so instead of uh, triggering for antibody production, the patient get infected. Okay, for the bovis na karak na, na species here, so this one would appear to be small, granular, that one is also round na colony, that would appear here as just like parang water droplets in your middle brook na culture major. Okay, then we have here the summary of the differentiation between your mycobacterium tuberculosis and your bovis. So we have here some of your biochemical reactions. So we have here the production of the niacin, makapag-produce ng niacin. We have also here growth inhibition. Growth, this is growth inhibition na in your thiopine, thiopine, that's your thiopine 2 carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid hydroxide. Ininhibit, pag positive dito, sinasabing in inhibited. Pag inhibited siya, it will not able to grow. And we have also nitrate reduction and pyrazinamidase. Zina, pyrazinamidase. That's the enzyme. That one will give all the positive reaction with your mycobacterium tuberculosis, but not with your bovis. Um, this one is growth inhibition na. Pag sinabing positive, growth inhibition, so this will be inhibited by the presence of this one. So pag, in the case of your mycobacterium tuberculosis, it will not grow in the presence of this one because that one is inhibited. Kaya ang positive natin dito, that's inhibited. Pag na-inhibit siya, mean to say it will not grow on that. Your bovis, on the other hand, hindi siya in-inhibit ng thiopine, ng thiopine to carboxylic acid natin, carboxylic acid hydroxide, and therefore, your bob is will able to grow in the presence of your uh, thio thio thiopine to carboxylic acid hydroxide. Okay, now we go to another classification of your mycobacteria. We have your non-tuberculosis mycobacteria. Other name for that would be your atypical mycobacteria or mycobacteria, mycobacterium other than tuberculosis. So, these are the other mycobacteria other than your tuberculosis or other than your mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, this group of mycobacteria try to cause a disease which resemble here the tuberculosis of, caused by your mycobacterium tuberculosis. Your MOTT or your atypical mycobacteria are differentiated based on, their, on the Kenyon classification. The Kenyon classification determines or classify the mycobacteria according to the duration of their growth, gano'n pa ka bilis, gano'n pa ka bagal, and their pigment production. Okay, so we have here classification, slow-growing slow na mga mycobacteria other than tuberculosis, usually able to grow here for, uh, sorry, this one able to grow for less than, okay, more than seven days, sorry, this one is less than, Okay, slow growing here, sobrang tagal nila mag-grow, so that would usually grow for more than 7 days. And they are producing pigment, that's why they are having that production of your carotenoids responsible for the color of their pigment. Okay, so they are classified here as either photochromogens. So photochromogens are those mycobacteria which eventually they are producing yellow na pigment when they are exposed to the light. Your scotochromogen, on the other hand, so, the mycobacteria that are producing yellow to orange pigment only when they are exposed to the dark. Again, they will not produce a pigment when they are exposed to the light. And non-photochromogens, on the other hand, do not produce their pigment. Either you try to expose that one to the dark or even to the light, they will not be producing a pigment. And we have also here the rapid-growing mycobacteria. So, this one are able to grow as less than 7 days mag-grow agad sila sa culture media natin. And they appear to be white or tan in color. They are not highly pigmented as compared with your slowly growing na mga mycobacteria. Okay, then we have here the species of your photochromogens. Again, photochromogens that are producing a yellow pigment when they are exposed to the light. It includes the following mycobacteria. 
Mycobacterium asiaticum, Mycobacterium gordoni or the tap water bacillus, Mycobacterium marinum, which is your fish tank granuloma. Then we have also here your simi. That one has been isolated here from your monkeys. Next, we have here your scotochromogens. The scotochromogens are producing uh, yellow-orange pigment only when they're exposed to the dark. This includes here your Mycobacterium gordonae. So, this is your top water bacillus. I wait lang. Kanina pala, Mycobacterium cansasii, which is your yellow bacillus. Yellow bacillus. Then, we have your, scoto, your scotochromogens. So, we have your gordonae, top water bacillus. We have your shulgai. Okay, that would be uh, belong here to both your photochromogen, scotochromogen, scrofalacium, on the other hand, that try to cause here the cervical lymph adenitis among children. And we have also here your senopy, that one produces here bird's nest colony characteristics in your cornmeal agar that has been first isolated from the African toad. Okay, then we have also here your non-photochromogens. So non-photochromogens, again, they are not producing a pigment, either they are, even if you're exposed at one to the light or even to the dark, still they are not producing pigment. So this most likely in the mga bang mycobacteria natin ay associated sa mga AIDS patients natin. The first one, we have your MAC or Mycobacterium avium intracellular complex. This one is the, cause, the most common cause of your bacterial Infections among AIDS patients natin. Then we have your avium subspecies paratuberculosis. Okay, that one would try to cause your chronic diarrhea in the form of your Crohn's disease or even in your uh, Jones disease. Then we have your Mycobacterium genovense, um, silatum, silatum here, and we have genovense that try to cause disseminated infection among AIDS patients. Mycobacterium hemolyticum, on the other hand, associated with your Hodgkin lymphoma and AIDS patient. That one require blood or hemin, kaya tinawag siyang hemolyticum. Uh, require blood or hemin, and therefore, they could be manifested here by its hemolytic reaction on that blood na culture media. Another one, we have your terrae complex, also called here as your radish bacillus. And we have also here your um, malmoense. That's cocobacilli without cross, brand, cross banding. And we have your ulcerans. And this is try to cause here your boroli ulcers and consider to be the third most common cause of or the most the third most common mycobacteria. Okay, then we have also here the rapid growing. So the rapid growing mycobacteria were able to grow here as a uh, as fast as less than seven days. So this includes the following. So we have your Mycobacterium for Tweetum abscessus group. That one try to cause your skin infection, continuous infection. Then we have also your Chelonae. That one try to cause disseminated infection among AIDS patients. Now your Fortitum abscessus and Chelonae are non-photochromogens. Meaning to say they are not producing pigment. Then we have your Smegmatis. On the other hand, as your Scotochromogen. So ito ay napoproduce ng pigment when they're only exposed to the dark. They try to cause here a rare form of uh, usually rare or rarely causing the infection. Then we have your non-cultivatable. Again, this one uh, is not able to be cultivated and able to grow in your culture media <coughs> with your agar. Okay, this is your Mycobacterium leprae, the cause of agent of your leprosy or your Hansen's disease. There are two manifestations of your leprosy. One is your tuberculoid leprosy. That one characterizes your skin, lesion. We have also here peripheral nerve involvement with the loss with the loss of your sensation. But this one would have an effective cell-mediated immunity. So medyo nakaka-recover ang patient natin. Hindi siya nagkakaroon ng kakaroon ng, hindi siya nag, really nagkakos uh, ng severe infection or manifestation. Okay, the next one, we have your lepromatous leprosy. Okay, your lepromatous leprosy, on the other hand, characterized here by your skin lesion, which is much extensive. The skin lesion, the lesion try to damage the subcutaneous tissues of our skin. When, when that one try to damage here your 
Uh, septum the nose. Try to damage the bridge of the nose. So, parang kinakain niya. It's also characterized here by symmetric and progressive nerve involvement and your cell-mediated immunity for that will not be effective. Okay, then we have here the culture. Since we consider your mycobacterium leprae as non-cultivatable, this one could only be grown in your animal inoculation. So animal inoculation is being done here by your biopsy materials. You are suspecting that one na my infection or my mycobacterium leprae. To check for that, na meron siya or positive for that, inoculate mo yung specimen mo into your mouse foot pad and try to perform the biopsy. Okay, so if you identify the disease on that, I mean to say your source of your specimen is infected for that. Again, this will not able to grow in our Lewenstein Jensen or your Middlebrook culture media as with your ordinary na mga mycobacteria.